<clears throat> All right, guys. So good evening, and welcome back to the second lecture of C programming. Now I want you all to open your notebook and give the heading 1.3 program or software. So come on, open your notebook and give the heading 1.3 program or software. Come on, do that. <clears throat> and under that, you can just write refer P N, refer P N. Refer P N five, refer P N five. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So now let's understand what we did yesterday and what we are about to do today. So yesterday we studied what is a computer, what is computer memory, and I hope you remember we studied three generations, three categories of programming languages, and these three categories were machine language. Assembly language, high-level language. All right. Now today we'll start the topic called program or software. Now you already know what is a program, so let's write the definition of a software. Okay. So now what exactly a software is? So I'll dictate the definition, and I want you all to write this definition in your notebooks. So come on, write the definition. A software is simply a set of programs. I repeat, a software is simply a set of programs. All right, guys. So now, before I explain you this definition, let's understand examples of some software. Now, what happens is every app on your cell phone. I repeat, every app on your cell phone, be it Facebook, be it Instagram, be it Snapchat, or anything. Okay. Every app on your cell phone is basically a software. Microsoft Word is a software. Google Chrome is a software. So anything which you use on the computer is a software. Okay. So first of all, write some examples, and then we'll discuss further. You can write examples: Instagram, Facebook, Google Chrome, Microsoft Word. Okay, now how do you define a software? What exactly is the meaning of the word software? So listen, now what happens is you already know what is a program, all right? Now a software is nothing but a set of programs. So whenever the program is very big, or I will say whenever some application is very large, whenever some application is very large, inside that application there will be many small, 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 small programs. And these programs collectively will be called one software. So, for example, the WhatsApp on your cell phone is a software inside which there will be small, small programs. Okay. Microsoft Word is basically a software inside which there will be many small, small programs. So, whenever you have a collection of programs doing one particular work, okay, then that collection of programs is called a software. And please understand that every software will do one particular work. For example, for example, <clears throat> Google Chrome will do the work of web browsing. Microsoft Word will do the work of documentation and so on. Now, one more thing I want to tell you over here that many a times, many a times, the word program and the word software are used interchangeably. That means sometimes we'll call a software as a program or a program as a software which is okay, which is not wrong. But just understand this way that whenever there is a group of programs, okay, into one unit, then that group is called a software, okay? All right, now we'll discuss some softwares which are important to us in this CP language, I mean in the CP subject. And one such software, which I told you yesterday, is a compiler, very, very, very important. Now, if CP lectures have started in your college, then you must have come across these terms, compiler, compilation, compiling, and so on. Now, <coughs> I'm sorry. Now, what exactly a compiler is? So first of all, give this heading compiler, and I'll dictate its definition. 
by the way its definition is there in your printed notes but because it is so very important we'll write a definition so give the heading compiler come on do that quickly okay now write the definition in your notebook come on write it right a compiler is itself a program which will convert our program written in high level language which will convert our program written in high level language in bracket you write source code i repeat source code close the bracket i repeat everything again a compiler is itself a program which will convert our program written in high level language to machine language in bracket you write in bracket you write object code object code and close the bracket all right now <clears throat> in order to understand this definition see if uh, uh, you were paying attention while writing the definition you must have already understood it but in case you did not understand let's uh, try to understand it now let's say let's say you know only english and i know only french and we want to talk to each other now in this situation what would we need in between come on answer that question in your mind we would need a translator so that translator is this compiler see what happens is that when we write the program we will write the program using statement like this now this is an actual statement of c language which is a high level language okay now the computer cannot understand this particular statement i hope you remember that a computer can understand only two symbols and that is 1 and 0 1 and 0 okay so the problem is very simple we can write we can understand only this thing the computer can understand only this thing all right and i forgot to tell you that this thing and this thing they are equivalent okay so for you this statement is x is equal to a plus b okay the same thing in computer language is this thing they are equivalent but the thing is that we can understand only this and the computer can understand only a sequence of ones and zeros so what do we need in between so in between we need a compiler so a compiler is actually a program which will convert the high level language like c like java to machine language okay now in your viva in your viva in your oral exam by the way when i'm teaching you cp i will also prepare you for your oral exams okay so please be attentive whenever i say in your viva because you may get these questions in your viva in your oral exams <coughs> i hope you have oral exams this semester anyway so now in your viva in your oral exam you could be asked a question that what are the two uses of the compiler or what two activities the compiler performs so the two main activities which the compiler performs are are translation translation and and error checking translation and error checking and the order is this now what i mean when i say the order is this so listen to me carefully what happens is every language has its own syntax syntax means rule syntax means grammar okay so for example if i'm writing a c language statement then for most of the statements i need to put a semicolon in the end this is the syntax of the c language so what the compiler will do is first of all it will check whether your program has any errors and if your program does not have any errors then only it will do the work of translation okay all right now finally one thing yesterday towards the very end of the lecture we had studied machine language and i had told you that machine language has when this sorry machine language has one advantage and we'll talk about the advantage today in the second lecture okay so now let me see whether you still remember the advantage of the machine language all right so now uh, i have chandni jaisingani in front of me so chandni can you tell me what is the advantage of machine language <coughs> all right so no reply so i have anjali in front of me anjali can you tell me what is the advantage of machine language 
All right. Again, no replies. It's okay. I think you guys have forgotten. So the advantage of machine language is that a program written in machine language is directly understood by the computer. I repeat, a program written in machine language is directly understood by the computer. See, it's very simple now. The computer can understand only machine language. So if you are writing a program in machine language, what is it which you don't need? You don't need a compiler. That's it. And that is the advantage of machine language. Anyway, now what you do is you draw this diagram, you draw this diagram and below the diagram, you just write two uses of compiler. Number one, error checking. Number two, translation. So come on, do that. Copy the diagram and copy these two. Come on, do that quickly. Okay, so I have, I hope you have copied this. Now let's move on. Now after compiler, we are still doing the same heading program or software. There are two more softwares which are important. So give the heading linker below that leave a line and give the heading loader. And I hope you are sitting with four pens of four different colors. So if you have pens of different colors, use colors like these, come on. Just give the heading linker, just give the heading loader. The detailed definition is there in your printed notes. Just give the headings, come on, do that. All right. Now, why I told you to use colors? Because as I told you yesterday that if you're using colors, okay, then things will become very simple for you. For example, over here, you will realize that linker is a program. Okay. Linker is basically a program. It is basically a software. So linker is a program which will do some kind of linking and loader is a program which will do some kind of loading. Now let's talk about a linker first. Now, I will not be able to explain you linker in great detail right now. So as the syllabus uh, moves ahead, maybe after some time, you'll understand what exactly the linker does. But still, little bit idea I'll give you today. Now, uh, what happens is, tell me one thing, how do you define a software? Okay, come on, at least this thing I'll ask some of you. So once again, I'll ask this question to Chandni, who did answer earlier. So Chandni, can you tell me how do you define a software? Again, no answer. Yes, she's not even sitting. Okay. So, uh, uh, sir, a software is simply a set of a program. Very good. Okay. You can mute yourself. <coughs> All right. So, uh, how do you define a software? A software is simply a set of programs. That is one thing. Okay. Now, there is one more thing which I'll tell you. Listen to me carefully. It's pretty simple, but it, you, sh uh, you should pay attention. Now, year onwards, many a times we will say, we'll use this term running a program or we will say executing a program, running a program, executing a program like that. So running a program means what? Running a program means that making the program do its work. Executing the program means making the program do its work. So when you run a program, when you execute a program, the program will basically show you some results. It will show you some output. Okay. Now, why am I saying all this? Because see what happens is, listen to me carefully, that in a software, inside the software, there are many programs. So let's say there, there is a software in which there are 10, 10 small, small programs. Now, when you execute the software, when you run the software, before you execute the software, all the 10 programs, must be combined into a single program. I repeat, before you execute the software, all the 10 programs inside the software should be combined into a single program. And that work of combining, that work of linking is done by linker. Okay. So I hope you understood what a linker is. 
if you did not understand what a linker is no problem okay when the syllabus moves ahead okay we'll again come back to it and i'll explain it to you again for time being it does the work of linking now i also hope you gave the heading loader loader okay now i am i am going to explain you loader in great detail great detail but not right now maybe after one hour why after one hour i'll tell you and over here you'll have to write some notes in your own words so what you do is you give the heading loader below that you leave half a page okay you leave half a page okay and after you leave half a page okay we'll move on to the next heading so just leave half a page in this half a page you are going to write uh, <coughs> i'm sorry you are going to write uh, some notes in your own words okay all right now let's move on to another important topic okay so this is the loader thing which i'll explain you later all right now what you do is after leaving half a page give the heading 1.4 introduction to c in a bracket you write refer pn 6.7 and also give the subheading basic features of c program so come on quickly give these headings whatever you see over here you should copy it in your notebook maintain your notebook very nicely come on give these headings all right listen now finally we are going to start with our c programming now till yesterday or till now what we were doing is we were trying to understand the basic concepts of programming and now we'll try to understand some introductory concepts of c language for that we are going to do our very first c language program which is this so whatever you see in blue color over here is a c program now when you run this program when you execute this program it will generate some output and that output will be this red color now what you will do is first you will copy all this and then i'll explain you in great detail but guys just hold down a minute don't start copying listen to me carefully your onwards whenever you are copying something okay be very attentive while copying that means while you are copying okay you should not think about something else pay attention while copying because what will happen is when you are paying attention while copying when you are paying attention while copying you are also revising that thing now paying attention is more important in c language because in c language what will happen is even if you do a small mistake like this okay your entire program will be wrong and you will get zero in exam okay so copy attentively i'll just tell you a few things because this is your first c program i'll tell you a few things now when you are copying all this maintain the case of the alphabets When I say case, I mean upper case and lower case. Upper case means capital, lower case means small. So, for example, for example, <coughs> if you see over here, most of the things are in lower case. So, if it is lower case, you write it in lower case. Okay. After that, you see this line, this line displaying, and over here I wrote the second message. Now, I purposely wrote it like this. Okay. So, what you do is you. start from here from this p you write till the semicolon then again you write till this display and purposely i repeat purposely write the second part on the next line the second message okay why i am doing this i'll tell you later on okay so copy everything in blue color black color red color and uh, then i'll explain so basically start from here from here and copy till here okay so i'll give you 3 minutes for this come on be fast come on start copying
All right, guys. So I hope you have already copied this. <coughs> okay. So now, if you have not copied, just take a screenshot and maybe you can complete it later. All right. Now pay attention. Listen to me when I'm explaining you. Don't write anything. <coughs> now, the first thing which we'll talk in this program, the first thing about which we'll talk in this program is <coughs> is the comment. Now, what is a comment? A comment is a statement which is enclosed between slash star and star slash. I repeat, a comment is a statement which is enclosed between slash star and star slash. Okay. Now, let me see how many of you are attentive. Answer a simple question over here. Okay. So, I asked this question to Sanika. Sanika, tell me one thing. How many comments do you see in this program? <clears throat> three yeah three okay so as you see over here in this particular program there are three comments the first one is this this is the first c program second is this displaying the first message and third is this displaying the second message okay now what is a comment <clears throat> so a comment is a statement which describes the logic of the program a comment in reality is not a part of the program. It simply describes the program. So what exactly I'm trying to say over here? See, now this is a very small program with hardly any logic in it. But in the real world, in the real world, the programs are very big. Something, uh, many a times one program has thousands of lines of code. And when you say thousands, okay, it's not an exaggeration. <clears throat> so what happens is that when the program is very big, it is very difficult to understand the logic of the program. So in that program, we, what we do is we write comments and comments are used to explain the logic of the program to the reader of the program. I repeat, the comments are written for the reader of the program, for the person who reads the program. So for example, anybody who reads this program, we are telling him that this is the first C program. Then we are telling him that we are displaying the first message. Then we are telling him that we are displaying the second message that way. Please understand the comments are ignored by the compiler. That means the compiler will not convert the comment to machine language. <coughs> I'm sorry. So just 10 minutes back, we had studied that a compiler will convert the high level language to machine language. So when you give this program to the compiler, the compiler will not convert this comment to machine language. Why? Because the comment is not meant for the compiler. It is meant for the reader of the program. Now, having, having said all this, I have a question over here. So I'll ask you a question. So <clears throat> let me pick some of you. Okay. So, uh, I have, all right. Okay. So let's say I have someone called Vivek G. Okay. So Vivek G, please mute, your, uh, unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Okay, so my first question is that if I remove the semicolon over here, what do you think? Will the compiler report an error? Yes. Yes. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, one more question. Let's say over here, instead of writing, this is the first C program. If I write, this is the 10th C program, will the compiler report an error? No. Yes or no? No. Okay, so I think you are telling me no. Anyway, so uh, please mute yourself. So uh, Vivek was not very clear, but I assume he gave me the right answers. See, what happens is that if I remove the semicolon over here, the compiler will report an error because we are going against the syntax of the language. But over here, if I write, this is the 10th C program, displaying the seventh message, displaying the 10th message, it's okay because the compiler is not bothered about the comments and it won't report error for the comments. In fact, there is one more thing which I'll tell you. The next thing which I'm going to tell you is simple, but please be attentive. It may confuse you, although it is simple. <clears throat> See, what happens is this statement is written in C language. This is written in C language. This printf is written in C language. But the comments are not written in C language. Comments are written in English language. 
So also pay attention to the fact that the comments are actually written in English language, not C language. Okay. Finally, one more thing. If you remember, I told you that you purposely write these three words on the next line. Now, why did I tell you to do that? Because see what happens is everything between slash star and star slash will be treated as a comment. So if I read anything over here, see where my mouse pointer is. See carefully where my mouse pointer is. If I write anything over here, then this thing is also treated as a comment. Okay. Now, another thing is, another thing is, one minute. <clears throat> now, uh, many a times, many a times, some college teachers, they may tell you that you can also write the comment this way. That means after the sprint tab, after the sprint tab, you'll put two slashes. And you will write some comment over here. You will write some comment over here. Let's say testing or something, anything like this. Okay. Now, please understand this style of commenting is allowed in C++ in Java, but not in C language. Okay. If you're doing practicals, okay. Uh, sorry, I forgot that you don't go to college now. But what happens is uh, if you're writing the comment in this manner, okay, you will not get an error. Why you will not get an error that I'll explain you very soon, but still refrain from writing the comments in this manner. This is originally the syntax of C++ and not C language. Okay. All right. Now, just a minute. Let me just erase this. Okay. Now, after having explained you comment, now let's talk about something called preprocessor directive. Preprocessor directive. Now I will talk about this later on also for timing a little bit in short. Now any statement starting with a hash, look here, any statement starting with a hash is called preprocessor directive. So this hash include stdio.h, this entire statement is called preprocessor directive. And this thing stdio.h is the name of a file and this file is called header file. It is called header file. Now, let me talk something in general. Let me talk something in general. Listen to me carefully. What I'm explaining you, you already know this, but still many of you don't realize this. <coughs> See what happens is everything which we store in our cell phone, everything which we store in our computer, that thing is stored as a file. I repeat everything which is stored in the cell phone in the computer is stored as a file. Every song is a file. Every photograph is a file. Every video is a file. A song is a file with extension .mp3. A video is a file with extension .mp4. So what happens is every file will have a first name and an extension separated by a dot. For example, for example, you may have a song. Okay, you may have a song. Uh, whose name could be something like abc.mp3. So this abc is the first name and mp3 is the extension. Now the first name can be anything over here, anything over here. But if it is a song, the extension will be mp3. So this mp3 basically uh, decides that what kind of content is there inside the file. Similarly, if it is a video, most probably its extension will be mp4, mp4. And the name can be anything X, Y, Z, A, B, C, anything, anything, anything. Now, why I'm telling you this? Because this stdio.h is actually the name of a file. And this file is called header file. So over here, the first name is stdio. And the extension is h separated by a dot. H stands for header. Anyway. Now, what you do is if you want, you can just put an arrow and write over here that this is a header file. Come on, do that. <coughs> okay, and don't forget that this entire statement is called preprocessor directive. By the way, you'll have to keep track of this small dot over here. Okay. See, currently, if you see, my dot is just below 1.4. Look at 1.4. Just below 1.4, you will see a small dot. Okay, so try to keep a track of that. Anyway, now, once that is over, once that is over, now, let's go to the next part. Okay, and that next part is this main, main. All right. 
Now, what happens is every C program starts with the main function. This is called the main function. All right. So uh, what happens is some people write void main, void main. Some people write int main. Now, whether you write void, whether you write in, both are correct. Now, what is the meaning of void? What is the meaning of int? That I can explain you only in chapter number six functions. Right now, I cannot give you its explanation. Don't forget, this is just an introduction. Okay. So for time being, just understand you can write void, you can write int, both are correct. The difference I'll tell you later on. If you write int over here, int over here, then in the end, in the end, we have to write something like, we have to write something like uh, return, return, return zero or return one. So this return zero, return one will come only when we write int over here. Anyway, now whether you write int, whether you write a void, that does not make a very big difference. What you need to understand is, just a minute. What you need to understand, sorry. <clears throat> so what you need to understand is that this void main is the starting of the program. That means the C compiler will execute the program starting from void main. Okay. Now this is the starting point of the program. Now after writing void main, you will always put, you will always put these things. Okay. Now when I say these things, uh, why did I say these things? Okay. So let's talk something in general, not about C language. Okay. Now I'll ask one of you about uh, something, one question. Okay. And this is not about C programming. Okay. So I have Sahil Moray in front of me. Okay. So Sahil, please unmute yourself and tell me what is this? What, what, what do you call this? Open bracket, closed bracket. Pardon? What? Open bracket, closed bracket. And if you want to give one, uh, one name to both of them, what will you call them? No idea, sir. <laughs> All right. So I'll ask Siddhar. Okay. Siddhar. So Siddhar, what do you call them? Okay. Practice. Yeah, tell me, Siddhar, what do you call them? Sir, I am Bhavin. Are you, okay, so Bhavin, what do you call them? Maybe parenthesis. Very good. Okay, listen. Now, what happens is most of the students, most of the students, they call this thing, this thing as a round brackets, round brackets. And many students call, call this thing, this thing as curly brackets. Okay. I am assuming that Bhavin has done programming earlier, so he knows the correct uh, answer. So, aaj ke baad, from today onwards, we will not call this the round brackets, okay? We will call this as parenthesis, okay? I repeat, we will not call it round bracket, we will call it parenthesis. So, here onwards, whenever I say parenthesis, okay, that means it is round, okay? I don't need to use the word round for that. Now, today onwards, we will not call this curly brackets. Today onwards, what we will do is we'll call them, we will call them braces. Look here. Okay. We'll call them braces. Okay. So after the main, we'll put a set of parentheses and then we'll put a set of braces and whatever statements we want to write, we'll write inside the braces, inside the braces. Okay. Uh, up a core bracket, bacha hai, okay. And that is. <clears throat> Many a times we'll use this, sorry. So many a times we'll be using this bracket also, this bracket also. So today onwards, we'll not call it, we'll not call it square brackets. We'll call it only brackets. By the way, this will be used very often in the chapter of arrays, arrays, chapter number eight arrays. Okay. So today onwards, this is bracket, this is parenthesis, and these are, these are braces. All right. Okay. So anyway, now coming back to the logic of the program. So what you do is you always write void main or int main. Then you always put parenthesis. After parenthesis, you put a set of braces and whatever you want to write, you write inside these braces. Now currently inside these braces, there are two statements. I'm not counting the comments. So there are two statements. One is this printf. Another is this printf. Now we'll be doing printf in great detail in chapter number four, in chapter number four, which is called data input and output. For time being, I'll just explain you briefly 
Now this printf does the work of output. That means whatever you write inside printf will be displayed on the monitor as the output. So print over here actually means display. So the syntax over here is that you should put double quotation marks. So see double quotes over here, double quotes over here. And whatever you want to display, you write inside the double quotes. So if you write welcome to the world of C, then in the output, you will see welcome to the world of C. Now there is one more printf. Now this printf starts with slash n. This slash n is called new line character. I repeat, it is called new line character and it is equivalent to the enter key of the keyboard. So if you want, you can just put an arrow over here and you can write enter key if you want. So now because of slash n, what will happen is the next output will come on the next line. So begin with C programming will come on the next line. But if you see carefully, you will realize some space over here. So this space over here comes because we had given a space over here. Okay, giving the space was not compulsory, but I purposely gave it so that you understand it conceptually. All right. So now we understood the printf also. The printf does the work of displaying. All right. So this was the first C program, first C program, and we have studied the introductory concepts of this program. Now let's move on to something very important. If you don't pay attention to the next part, then you will have doubts throughout your entire semester. Almost every lecture, you may keep asking me some doubts. Okay. So now what we are going to do, we are going to do all this practically. That means I will teach you how to install the C language. Okay and then how to do programming on your computer, okay? And we are going to do it together, okay? All right, <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> so, uh, please be attentive. So now, if you want to uh, do C programming, you need to have C compiler, C compiler. Now, there are many C compilers available like Turbo C++, uh, Code Blocks, Dave and many, many, many more. Okay, Ubuntu and many more. Now, two most popular, two most popular compilers are Turbo C++ and Code Blocks. Okay, in some colleges, teachers use Turbo C++. In some, they use Code Blocks. So I will teach you installation of both of them. Turbo C++ is very old. Okay, and it's been you. It's in use since maybe 1990s. Okay. One more thing is that when we install the C compiler, we actually install the C++ compiler. So you can do either a C++ program or a C program. It's okay. Okay. <clears throat> now, right now, don't do anything. Okay. That means don't simultaneously do things. First, listen to me. Then I'll give you five minutes. And in that time, you can do all these things on your laptop or your computer. Okay. If you do things with me right now, you will get confused. Okay. So what you need to do is on the internet, on Google, you can type something like Turbo C++. Okay. See over here and just hit the enter key. <coughs> now over here, you will see this link Turbo C dot M E. Okay. Turbo C dot M E. So you go to that website. And over here, over here, you will see download Turbo C++ and you will see various things, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Windows 10. Okay. So now what you will do is you will scroll down, you'll scroll down and over here, see, you will see these two things. Download Turbo C++ version 3.2 file and download Turbo C++ latest version file. Purposely. I repeat purposely don't download, don't install the latest version because it is unstable. It may not work on many laptops, many computers. So we'll download this old one. Okay. So to download it, you simply need to click on this. All right. So when you click on it, that download will start. So see over here at the bottom of my screen, it's already downloaded. All right. Now I hope you know that in your laptop, most probably whatever you have downloaded okay will be there inside a folder called downloads okay so now let's go to the downloads folder so this is the chrome and see this is the downloads folder all right so now what i will do is i'll go to the downloads folder just a minute guys just a second all right so now what i will do is i'll go to the downloads folder 
Now in the downloads folder, in the downloads folder, you will see this Turbo C3. Okay. Now I click on show in folder. All right. And I have this zip file. I have this zip file. Okay. Now this is a zip file, which you need to extract, which you need to unzip. So right click it, right click it and just do extract here. All right. So it says confirm file replace. It is telling me file replace because I already have this with me. Okay. So I'll say yes, or I'll say yes to all. All right. Uh, in your case, it will not ask you confirm replace because you will not have another file on your computer. Okay. So now uh, if you see over here, I have this folder, this folder. Okay. So I got this folder. I got this folder right now after unzipping. Okay. Now I will go inside this folder and inside this folder, see this thing turbo C plus plus 3.2 and sorry, one minute. And if you see it's type, it's written windows installer package, windows installer package. So now all you need to do is double click this. Okay. So now you double click this. All right. So when you double click this, it will, uh, First of all, in your computer, it may ask you that you, do you trust this particular software? So in that case, you just click on yes. Okay. Uh, because I have already installed it. It had asked me first time. It is not asking me now. Now, after that, all you need to do is you just you need to click on next, 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 next. I am not doing it right now. I'm not doing it right now because uh, I have already installed it. Okay. So I will click on cancel. Okay. But you will simply click on next, 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 and so on. All right. Now, once that is done, see, now I'll say, are you sure you want to cancel? So I'll click on yes. <clears throat> okay. Now, once you have installed all this, once you have installed all this, what will happen is on the desktop, okay, on the desktop, you will have this particular icon, shortcut icon. In case you cannot see this, I will bring it over here. See, so it is written MS DOS. In case you cannot read it, I will read it for you. So it is written MS DOS Turbo C++. Now what I will do is I'll double click this. Okay, one minute. All right, so I will double click this and when I double click this, I will get this particular interface. Now over here, you just need to click on, you just need to click on start Turbo C++, start Turbo C++, okay. So when you click on this, you will see a blue color screen like this. Okay. Now this screen, this screen is often called text editor. I repeat, it's called text editor. Okay. Now what we will do is we'll start doing the program over here. So I will click on file. I'll click on file. I'll click on new. All right. Now over here, I'll start doing the program. So I'll type the same program. So very quickly see include, include stdio.h <clears throat> all right then void main void main okay and printf printf i'll just type welcome welcome and semicolon and after that i can copy this way okay see i, I can do alt e and i can do c copying and then again, Alt E and P. So one more printf over here, I'll write slash n slash n. And then I will say begin, begin. <clears throat> okay. And I'll. Okay. And now I close this. Now I close this. Now listen to me very carefully. Now, if you are using Turbo C++, then you need to add three statements more. Now, why three more statements? I'll tell you. So first of all, over here, I'll add get CX and don't add these statements in your notebook. Okay. Let it be as it is. Then CLR SCR, CLR SCR. And over here, I'll write hash include, hash include, hash include. Okay. Conio, conio dot H. Okay. And now, the program is over. Now, why I wrote these three statements, I'll tell you very soon, very soon. Now, once this much is done, once this much is done, I will now save the program. 
Now, all this time, what I was doing is I was doing the work of text editing. So text editing means basically typing, cutting, pasting, saving all these things. Okay. So I will now save the program. I'll click on save. Now over here, please be attentive. Okay. Now, when you save the program, uh, by the way, if you uh, look at this carefully, you will realize that the, the interface is pretty old. So as I told you, it was uh, Turbo C++, you know, it uh, was, it came into picture in 1990s. Okay. So since then the interface is same. That means when I was a student that time also, it had the same interface. Anyway, now over here, you see some path C colon Turbo C3 bin, and then uh, here you see this project. So what you can do is if you want, you can just double click on this. I will double click on project. Okay. So now just a minute. Okay. So see, now this is the path. See this carefully. C colon turbo C3. Look at my blinking cursor. Okay. Bin project. And after that, you see something like this. Now see, I'll read it. It says no name 00.cpp. I repeat no name 00.cpp. Now over here, what happens is, listen to me carefully, please. By default, by default, your C program will be stored inside a file whose name will be no name 00.cpp. No name 00.cpp. Now CPP stands for C++. So if you want to create a C++ file, you write .cpp. But for time being, we'll create a C file. So here, what we will do is we'll write .c. Okay. And now, now if I want a different first name, okay, then I'll erase this and I'll just click on first. Now, sorry, I'll type first. So now the name of my program, I mean, this program will be stored inside a file called first.c. Now also look at a path over here. This first.c will be stored inside a folder called project, which will be stored in bin, which will be stored in turbo C3. Now I'll click on OK over here. Okay. Now, very soon I'm going to compile and execute the program. So let me compile and execute the program. So to compile the program, I'll click on, see this, Alt, this thing, compile. On the keyboard, you can even press Alt F9. So I'll do that. All right. So it says success. Success, press any keys. Now it is telling me success because there are no errors. Now let me purposely create one error over here. So let's say I create an, let's say I forget to put the semicolon. Now I'll save this and again, I will compile. So now when I do that, it is telling me errors and see it is telling me one. Okay. And it is telling me press any key. So I'll press any key on the keyboard and now see here, you will see the error. So it is telling me statement missing and this statement is highlighted. Now, some of you will wonder that the error is actually in this first printf. Okay. So why is the second printf highlighted? So the point is that most of the compilers will not show you the errors precisely. Okay. They may show you the error one statement above or below. So a little bit of work you'll have to do on your own. By the way, the error which was generated over here is called syntax error. Syntax error means that there was a uh, error in the grammar of the C language. Syntax means grammar. I'll put the semicolon again. Now, after changing the program, always save the program. Always save the program. Click on yes over here and always compile the program. Compile the program. So save and compile. So now it is telling me success. Press any key. Now, once that is done, once that is done, now we'll run the program. So to run the program, click on run over here. Again, click on run or press control F9. So now, when I press control F9, I see this black colored screen. Okay. The screen is completely black in color. So this screen, which is in front of you. Okay. It is called input output screen. I repeat, it is called input output screen. This is the screen on which you will see the output of the program. Now the cursor is blinking, which means when I hit any key, the enter key on the keyboard, the output will go away. All right. So guys, this was our first C program. Now there are many more things which I need to explain you over here, but what I will do is I will give you, I will give you five to 10 minutes. Now in these five to 10 minutes, what you will do is you will install Turbo C++ and you will try to do a very small program also. 
and why did i write a conio and clear screen okay that i will tell you later on by the way if you want to make this screen smaller then you can press alt enter so if i press alt enter see it will become small like this okay so now come on your time starts now it's 655 okay try to complete this entire program by 75 okay maximum 10 minutes so come on and uh, i am still sitting in front of you over here so if you have any doubts you can ask me all right so come on start with installation do the program and you can ask me doubts you can raise your hands and i will unmute you come on, come on start so guys i hope you have completed the installation and you did that program now just in case you could not do the installation or you could not do the program no problem stop doing it right now i will upload this lecture on youtube and maybe that time you can see the lecture once again and you can do all these things now i'm going to teach you something more important more difficult so please be attentive now <clears throat> so uh, guys this is i press the alt f9 all right by the way uh, this is the full screen in front of you if you want to minimize it you can press alt enter not alt f9 sorry alt enter and once again if you press alt enter it will become full screen <clears throat> okay anyway now i hope uh, you remember that there are three extra statements which i had typed over here that is conio.h clr scr and get ceh okay and i told you don't write these statements in your notebook they are required only in the program so now i am going to explain you explain you what happens over here but first let me compile and run the program so to compile the program i press alt f9 alt f9 <clears throat> and for executing the program i press control f9 so i press control f9 all right so when i press control f9 i get this particular output okay so everything is fine till here now i'll hit the enter key and now uh what i will do is i'll make this clear screen as a comment now if i want to make it a comment ideally i should type slash star and star slash but uh, if you remember i told you that even if you type two slashes it is okay your compiler will accept it because this is actually a c++ compiler but don't put two slashes in your exam otherwise you may lose marks <coughs> anyway now if this clr scr is a comment that means it is now not a part of our program so now what i do is i pre i save the program all right i do alt f9 okay and i do control f9 now over here if you see carefully you will realize that welcome begin welcome begin is displayed a total of two times now let me execute the program a third time okay i will do control f9 on my keyboard and see one more time so guys what is happening over here so the concept is very simple i have removed clr scr from your so clr scr stands for clear screen so if i remove clr scr the screen is not cleared of the previous execution and that's why you see the output of the previous executions okay so if i do it one more time okay the last welcome begin which you see the last one okay it is that welcome begin uh, which is of the uh, latest execution the last execution all right and the very first welcome begin is of the very first execution so that's how that is the reason we should write clr scr so that the screen gets cleared of the previous content now i'll keep clr scr and i'll make get ch as a comment okay now what happens is ideally uh, whenever you change your program you should save the program you should compile the program by typing alt f9 and then you should run the program by uh, pressing control f9 what happens is that when you do alt f9 you are compiling the program so that time what will happen is the compiler will convert the source code to machine code 
So don't forget, this is the source code. This is the high level language, which will be converted to machine language when you compile the program and you do all F9. <clears throat> and uh, when you uh, do control F9, that means when you run the program, the program will finally execute and will show you the output. So ideally, every time you change the program, you should save it, you should compile it, then you should run it. But what happens is in all the latest versions, I repeat in all the latest versions, if you change the program and then if you directly run the program, directly run the program, still it will work correctly. But, but a good programming practice says that always save, compile and run. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so now I have saved the program, but I have removed get ch. Now see what will happen. Now I'll compile the program by doing alt F9. It says success, press any key. Now I'll run the program and see now I'm about to click on run. So I click. Okay. It says yes. One more time I'll click. Okay. Did you see the output? No. So let's execute one more time. Did you see the output? No. So let's execute one more time. Did you see the output? No. But if you have very sharp eyes, you must have realized that there was a flicker. There was a flicker when I clicked on run. So what is happening is that when I click on run, the program is running, the program is executing, but you are able to see the output only for a fraction of a second, maybe for one millisecond, and then the output disappears. Now try to see the flicker this time. I'll run again. Try to see the flicker this time. See, I'm sure you must have seen it this time. So basically what happened over here that you saw the output for a fraction of a second, then the output disappeared and that is why you could not figure it out. So if you write get ch, what get ch will do, it will hold the output on the screen. So now see I'm running again. Now the output will be held on the screen. Only when you press the enter key, then only the output screen will disappear. So basically you should write get C out, uh, get sorry. So basically you should write get CH if you want to hold the output on the screen. Okay. Now, uh, what you need to understand over here is, see, I explained you why to write CLR SCR, why to write get CH. Now the question is why to write hash include conio.h. By the way, conio stands for console input output. So this hash input conio.h is the supporting statement of CLR SCR. That means if you want to write CLR SCR, then you have to write hash include conio.h. Now, uh, what is the meaning of the supporting statement that I will explain you in chapter number six functions. Similarly, the supporting statement of printf is hash include stdio.h. Okay. So if you want to write printf, you should first write hash include stdio.h. That is the logic. Okay. All right. Now uh, I have a question for, uh, for you and you'll answer this question in your mind. And if you answer this question correctly, that means you have understood the, the concept of these three lines. Tell me one thing that these three lines, conio, clear screen, get ch, are they required to be written if you are writing a program on a piece of paper? If you're writing a program on a piece of paper, are these lines required? The answer is no, because these lines are required only during execution of the program on the computer, because these three lines help you to see the output in a better manner. Okay. So on a piece of paper, they're irrelevant. However, if you write these three lines on a piece of paper, it is okay. But the problem is that if you write these lines, and if you make a mistake, then you will lose marks. So better don't write these lines in your theory exam on a piece of paper. Many a times in my programs, you will see these three lines and many a times you won't see these three lines. So that's perfectly okay. No problem at all. All right. <clears throat> okay. So now I have explained you the concept behind these three lines. Okay. Uh, now let's go back. Uh, to our installation.
So guys, now let's understand the installation of code blocks. Now, first of all, I'll go to this website, www.codeblocks.org. Now, after going here, click on downloads. And then over here, click on download binary release. And here you'll get the option for operating system. So depending on the operating system, you do the clicking over here. So for example, you can download for MacBook, for Linux, for Windows. So if I have Windows, I'll go to Windows. Now these are the files. Uh, uh, out of these files, you are supposed to download and install one of them. So over here, you need to download this fourth one, which is called Code Blocks 20.03 Min GW. The full form of Min GW is minimalist gnu windows anyway now i'll download it and for download i need to click over here so when i click over here it will take you to some other website where it says your download will start shortly so see this is the timer and now towards the bottom of the screen you see the download being started now this is a very big file so i will just pause the download because i already have it with me the file is already there in my computer so i have paused the download and now i'll go to my downloads folder where where this file is already present i hope you realize that you will not pause the download you will uh, you will allow the entire download to get completed so now i go to my downloads folder so over here i'll just say <clears throat> show in folder and over here you see this file code blocks 20.03 min gw so this is the file which you need to install on your computer so over here all you need to do is just double click this file just double click this file okay so now i will double click this so when i double click this <clears throat> It will ask me, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher? So just say yes over here. Now, when you say yes, okay, the installation will start. When I click on next, the installation will start. Now in my computer, it is already installed. So I will not install it once again. I will just cancel the installation, but I'm sure you understand you will not cancel it. You will allow the installation to complete. Now, once the installation is complete, once it is over, now what you will do is you will go to your desktop and on your desktop you will see this icon shortcut icon called code blocks so now i'll double click this <coughs> code blocks will take some time to open <coughs> All right, now this is the interface of the code blocks. This is the IDE of the code blocks. By the way, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Okay, so this is called code blocks IDE, where you can do the C program. Now, how to do the program? So pay attention, listen to this very carefully. Now you'll go to file, you'll click on new. Now, when you click on new, on the right side, you will see this sub menu. So here, select file. Now over here, you select C, C++ source and then click on go over here. Now over here, you just need to click on next. Now here it will ask you whether you want to create a C file or C++ file. So for time being, I will say C file. So next. And now over here, you see these three dots. Okay, see these three dots over here. So click on these three dots. They will allow you to select a folder where you want to store code blocks so now now i hope you are aware of the screen where you can store uh, programs so see i'll go to this pc okay inside this pc inside this pc i'll go to c drive c drive inside c drive see i have a folder called c programs so i'll go inside c programs okay and here now i'm inside c programs that means my program is going to be stored in this folder now, in the file name, I will select any file name. So let's say I type hello 
hello dot c okay so hello is the first name c is the extension over here all right now once this is over once this is over i'll click on save i'll click on save okay and here i'll click on finish now when i click on finish over here see what will happen over here so see here now i have a program called hello.c now very quickly i'll show you that folder of c programs so i go to this pc i'm so sorry i'm sorry so i go to c then i go to c programs and see here i have this hello.c hello.c okay now when i over here you can see it has zero bytes it has zero bytes why because right now right now the program is not yet written moreover in the type also you can see the c file over here c file okay now um, let me also tell you why i prefer code blocks over turbo c++ see uh, there are a few differences over here one difference is that code blocks uh, if you are using code blocks then you can store your program anywhere in the computer for example right now i have stored the program in a folder called c programs but if you are using turbo c++ you will have to store your program in that folder that folder means uh, c colon slash turbo c3 slash bin uh, slash projects okay so that is one problem with uh, turbo c++ another thing is that uh, code blocks will also do code completion for you and indentation i repeat it will do code completion for you and indentation look what i have typed over here now what is the meaning of code completion what is the meaning of indentation that i will tell you very soon okay so now let's start with the program so i'll type the same program hash include stdio.h moreover this code blocks is a modern uh, a uh, compiler modern ide integrated development environment so it has many features for example if i want to increase or decrease the font size i can just do pinch and zoom on my uh, mouse trackpad okay something like this see but these small small features you will not get in turbo c++ anyway now void main void main all right and now see what will happen now code completion will take place see now i am about to type the opening brace so i have typed only the opening brace the closing brace will come automatically so that is what i say code completion okay not only that if i am typing something like include see then all these things will come automatically let's say i am typing in or let's say i am typing something like st let me type once again hash see i gave hash so i get all these options from where i can select this include okay so this is called code completion anyway so now i will just do a printf so see the printf came automatically and i will just write hello hello code blocks okay and that's it only this much i'll do in the program uh now just a minute back i had written a word called indentation so indentation means what indentation means pushing on the right side so that things look better so see if you see carefully this printf is pushed a little on the right side and this i did not do this code blocks did automatically so these are some small small features because of which i prefer code blocks instead of turbo c++ anyway now once this is over i will compile and run the program so for compiling i go inside sorry i will first save the program so i save the program now i go to build now for compiling the program either i can click on build or i can click on compile the current file anyone i'll prefer build now when i click on build you will see one error over here error okay now let's see what error so okay now there are two errors this error uh, says see first this error uh, unfortunately i cannot increase the size of this thing so in case you cannot read it i'll read it for you it says error print f was not declared in the scope so see this is line number 4 and in line number 4 if you see carefully instead of typing print print f i have typed the print f that means i missed the t so i put the t now okay so this error is gone now there is one more error which says error main must return int so what happens is that <coughs> when we are using code blocks code blocks 
that time we cannot write in uh, void main we must write int main now why int main why not void main all these things i will tell you in chapter number 6 uh, functions right now it's not very important and and if you want in the end in the end you can write return 0 or return 1 but in code blocks writing this return 0 return 1 is optional so once again i am telling you this int over here or this void over here or this return 0 return 1 all this will not affect the logic of your program okay the logic of the program will remain same so no matter which compiler you are using it's okay whatever you write in to void it's okay okay anyway now i have removed the error so i'll save it again i will build it again and now i'll run the program so for running the program click on build again now click on run now either you can first click on build and then click on run separately or what you can do is you can click on build and run so compiling and executing will take place one after another in one command anyway right now i'll click on run so when i click on run this is the input output screen which says hello code blocks hello code blocks and after that same thing process return zero all these things okay now i hit the enter key so you saw the output of this program all right so guys this is how code blocks works now having done uh, the practicals having installed turbo c++ and code blocks now let's understand some more concepts so i want everybody to give this heading come on so give this heading stages or softwares involved in program development give the heading in your notebook <clears throat> all right now what we are going to discuss is slightly difficult so please be very attentive now what happens is whenever you are doing a c program on your computer several softwares several other programs act on your c program that means during the development of your c program you need help of at least five different softwares five different programs so under this particular heading we are going to study which five softwares are required for the development of your c program in other in other words we are going to study the five stages of the software development over here okay now the first stage is called text editing and for text editing you need text editor now what is the meaning of text editing so text editing means typing cutting pasting saving all that now if you want to do text editing you need a text editor the simplest example of text editor is the notepad so notepad microsoft word all of them are text editors so that is what happens is that whenever we do c program first we need to type the program and for that we need a text editor so this blue screen which you saw just now this blue screen which you have been seeing in this lecture this is basically a text editor similarly when we were doing code blocks okay you had that white color screen so that is also the text editor where you type your program so once the text editing is over once the text editing is over the next thing which you will do will be compiling so in turbo c++ you can press alt f9 okay and in uh, code blocks you can select the option for build so whether you do build or whether you do alt f9 you are basically compiling your program now when you are compiling the program again two softwares two softwares act on your program two softwares okay uh, the first one is called pre processor and the second one is called compiler now you know what is a compiler so let's talk about the pre processor it is slightly difficult so please be attentive mm. first of all over here the word pre means before so we call it pre processor because this software uh, acts before the compiler it will do its work before the compiler so that is why it is called pre processor now what work it does so let's understand that now for that have a look at this turbo c++ program okay now i hope you remember that in this particular program there is a statement which is called pre processor directive 
so tell me which is that statement it is the very first statement or i will say the first two statements which are called hash include stdio.h and hash include conio.h so these statements are called pre processor directives in fact any statement starting with a hash is called a pre processor directive now uh, things which i'm going to explain you are difficult listen to me carefully and this could be asked in your oral exam or uh, even in your theory exam as a two mark question so listen <clears throat> now if somebody is asking you that what work pre processor does so in one word you can say that pre processor does the work of substitution i repeat pre processor does the work of substitution now the question is what substitution so for that let's go to the installation folder of uh, turbo c so <clears throat> this is my pc this is my pc so here i go to windows <clears throat> here i go to windows c okay now see there is a folder called just a minute all right so see there is a folder called turbo c3 i go inside this now inside this see there is a folder called include look at the name include okay now inside this look at all these files look at all these files carefully and look at the type over here h file now all these files which you see over here they are called header files okay and their extension is .h i repeat they are called header files now one such header file is this stdio which you already know now i'll just double click and open this header file so you can see that inside this header file there are so many contents see this now we are not bothered about its contents but just pay attention to the fact that there are 237 lines in it see it look towards the bottom of my screen right the bottom see this 237 okay so you just need to pay attention to the fact that there is a header file called stdio.h which has some 237 lines of code okay all right now you understood this now what next so listen now let's go to our program so i'll close all this okay so now can you answer in one word can you answer in one word what work the preprocessor does the answer is substitution now what happens is this will be carefully when you press when you press compile over here okay when you press alt f9 over here the pre processor will first come into action and it will do the work of substitution now the question is what substitution so listen to me carefully what the pre processor will do it will replace this line the very first line okay look carefully it will replace the very first line by the contents of stdio.h so i hope you remember that you had seen 237 lines inside this file stdio.h so the 237 lines will be substituted over here okay now you may have a question in your mind that why this substitution is done so unfortunately that i cannot explain you right now that i will explain you in chapter number take a guess which chapter number chapter number 6 functions okay anyway so all these concepts are related to functions so that we'll see later on so you understood the pre processor now now after pre processor the compiler will come into action and the compiler will perform two activities error checking and translation so first it will check whether there are any errors in the program and if there are no errors then it will do translation of high level language to machine language okay now once the translation is done now what you will do is you will once the compilation is done let me do the compilation and show you so see i click on compile now when you see this success press any key it means that two softwares have finished their work on your program and these two softwares are pre processor and compiler the compiler has also converted your source code to machine code don't forget this thing this thing is called source code now once all that is done now i'll click on run run or i'll uh, on the keyboard i'll press control f9 now when i press control f9 again two softwares will work on your program and these two softwares are linker and loader linker and loader now what work linker will do what work linker will do so listen to me carefully 
I've explained this to you, but once again, I'm telling you, I hope you remember the definition of a software. So a software is simply a set of programs. A software is simply a set of programs. So what happens is whenever you are about to execute a software, that time just before the execution, just before the execution, all the individual programs of the software must be combined into a single program and only after that the execution can start. So combining all these programs into a single program is called linking and that verb is done by linker. Now our program, this program is a very small program in which the linker has hardly any role to play. Okay. So you understood what the linker is. Now after linker, the next software which will work on your program is the loader. Now I need to explain you loader in great detail. Okay. I hope you remember you have even left half a page for that. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, that I will explain you, but for time being, just understand that your C program goes through five stages, text editing, pre-processing, compiling, linking and loading. Okay. Loading is sometimes also called executing. Now I'll explain you loader. But before that, what I suggest is you just quickly copy all this. And after copying all this, you will go to that page where you are given the heading of loader and you have left half a page. So there I will explain you something and then you will make a note of it in your own words. But first quickly copy all this. Come on, start. Okay, now let's go to loader. Okay, so this will be the <clears throat> last thing which we'll study over here. Okay, <clears throat> it is difficult, but it is very interesting. So pay attention. Now we need to go back to loader. So I hope you have given this heading. So go back to this page where you had given this heading. And I think you have left half a page below this. <clears throat> All right, now. Uh, the explanation is difficult, but very interesting. And after the explanation is over, I would want you to write some notes in your own words. So please be attentive. Okay. Now, what is a loader? So the loader is also a program. It is also a software which will do the work of loading. Now what loading? So listen to me very carefully. Now I hope you remember that this is, this is the block diagram of the computer. This is the block diagram of the computer. Now. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Now in this block diagram, there is this memory unit and this CPU. This arrow shows the transfer of data from the memory unit to CPU. And this arrow shows the transfer of data from the CPU to the memory unit. Now, right now we are not interested in this arrow. So let it go. Okay. One minute, just a minute guys. So just a minute. Okay. Before that, I'll tell you something else. Uh, uh, there is some, you know, uh, I just spoke about something and the order of animation is something else. So I'll once again tell you. So uh, this is memory unit and uh, this is the, this entire thing is the block diagram. This entire thing is the block diagram of the computer. This is memory unit and this is CPU. So you saw this block diagram yesterday. Okay. Now I hope you also remember that yesterday, yesterday uh, I had taught you that this memory unit can be, this memory unit can be of three types, ROM, hard disk and RAM, ROM, hard disk and RAM. Now on ROM, you cannot do any writing, you cannot do any storing. So let's leave it out of question. Okay. Let's not talk about ROM because we cannot touch it. Now let's talk about RAM. Okay. This memory unit could be RAM or this memory unit could be hard disk. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, before I proceed further, I have a very simple, very simple question for you. Very simple question for you all. And I want one of you to answer this question. This question is not about C language. Okay. It's not about C language. Okay. So, uh, the question which I'm asking you, it could, it is about a cell phone. It is about a computer. Okay. The same question applies to both the cell phone as well as computer. All right. So I'll ask this question to, uh, let's say Kyle Crasto, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Kyle. So Kyle, can you hear me? 
Hello. Yes. So uh, I have a question. The question is that when you're storing a song in your cell phone or in your computer, you will store the song uh, on the hard disk or on the RAM? Hard disk. Very good. Okay. Now, please mute yourself. Now, you must have heard that he said that we'll store the song on the hard disk. Okay. So, here also in my example, let me store the song. Let me store the song on the hard disk. So, look here. So, I have my hard disk and on the hard disk, there is a song. Okay. <laughs> now, let's say I double click on that song. Okay. I double click on the song and when I double click on the song, obviously the song will start playing. Now, your onwards, your onwards, you guys should think like engineers, like programmers. That means you should wonder in your mind that when I double click on the song, what really happens in the background? So I hope you remember, I hope you remember that everything which is stored in computer memory, I repeat, everything which is stored in computer memory is stored as a sequence of ones and zeros. So this song which you see over here, this song which you see over here, this song is also stored as a sequence of ones and zeros. No matter what you store in computer memory, it is basically ones and zeros. So this song is basically some sequence of ones and zeros. Now what will happen is that when you double click on that song, when you double click on that song, these ones and zeros will start flowing from hard disk to CPU. By the way, I'll just remove this arrow. It's not required. So let it go. Now, what will happen is this ones and zeros, ones and zeros, they will start flowing. They will start flowing from the hard disk to CPU. So see, all these ones and zeros of the song, they go to the CPU. Now, in CPU, this P, P, P stands for processing. Okay. So what the CPU will do is the CPU will convert ones and zeros. The CPU will convert ones and zeros to, can you take a guess to what? It will convert all the ones and zeros to sound, to sound. Okay. So in hard disk, this one and zero was there. It went to CPU. The CPU converted ones and zeros to sound. And then this sound, this sound gets outputted on the speaker. This sound gets outputted on the speaker. <coughs> I'm sorry. So I hope you must have understood this entire mechanism. Okay. Now what happens is, listen to me carefully. If the song is directly transferred from hard disk to CPU, if the song is directly transferred from hard disk to CPU, then you will hear the song with breaks in it. You'll hear the song with breaks in it. Now, when I say breaks in it, what I mean is, see, if you're talking to your uh, friend on phone and if the signal is not very clear, what will you tell your friend? So you will tell your friend that your voice is breaking. So that breaking effect, you will hear over here. Okay. So now I'm going to ask a question to one of you, one of you, and uh, in my physical classes, in my physical classes, what used to happen is the one who answered the next question correctly, I used to give him or her a chocolate. Okay. So unfortunately, uh, you know that, that I cannot do over here, but you may still assume that you, that you got the chocolate. So now this is my question. So everybody listen to my question. The question is, if this is the mechanism, if this is the mechanism, why will you hear the song with breaks in it. Why will you hear the song with breaks in it? Okay. So anybody who knows the answer, who thinks that he knows or he or she knows the answer can unmute and answer the question. <clears throat> it's okay to give a wrong answer. It's better to give a wrong answer instead of keeping quiet. You may unmute yourself and you can give me the answer. Anyone? Okay, so here is the answer. Listen, I hope you remember that yesterday we had studied the differences between hard disk and RAM. Now, I want you to turn your pages, one or two pages backwards, and tell me the second difference between, between hard disk and RAM. Come on, you can unmute yourself and you can tell me the second difference. What is it? <coughs> Hello. Yeah, what is the second difference? Uh, low access time and high access time. Very good. Okay. 
So now this has something to do with it. So listen to me carefully. So the concept over here is that hard disk has high access time, which means hard disk is slower than RAM. So what will happen is that if the song is directly transferred from hard disk to CPU, then this song will be transferred very slowly. I repeat, this song will be transferred very slowly and the CPU will not receive the required number of bits uh, 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 continuously. So what will happen is the CPU is very fast. The CPU is very fast. So it will convert, it will convert some amount of bits to sound and then it will wait for the hard disk. Okay. So while it is waiting for the hard disk, you will hear that breaks. Okay. So I repeat once again, the CPU is fast. Okay. But the hard disk is not very fast. So what will happen is the CPU will quickly convert the received bits, the received one and zeros to sound. And then it will wait for more ones and zeros from the hard disk. But hard disk is very slow and that is why uh, while the remaining bits are being transferred, you will hear that break in the sound. Okay. Okay. So now what happens is in reality, in reality, do you ever hear breaks in the song when you are listening the song? Come on, anybody answer the question? No. No, you don't. You never hear the breaks. Okay. Now, why you never hear the breaks? Because in reality, things don't work this way. Okay. What I told you just now, okay, this is actually wrong. It could have happened that way, but it does not happen this way. In reality, between hard disk and CPU, between hard disk and CPU comes RAM, the main memory. What happens is, listen to me carefully, things are interesting. When you double click on the song, the entire song, I repeat, the entire song is first copied from hard disk to RAM and then while the song is being played, I repeat the word while, the word while is important. While the song is being played, the song is transferred from RAM to CPU. So the bits, ones and zeros are stored in RAM and while the song is being played, it is transferred from RAM to CPU. Okay. Now RAM is very fast. So that problem of breaking will not occur now. Now, some of you must have forgotten that we are discussing over here a software called loader. Okay. We want to understand a loader. Okay. So now the question is, what is this loader? Okay. So I want one of you to take a guess over here. So Rahul Kapadia, can you tell me what a loader will do over here? Okay. Anyone else can unmute and can you tell me what role the loader will play over here? Very, 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 very simple. Very simple. I always tell my students, pay attention to the name and derive the meaning from the name itself. Loader will do the work of loading. So look here, look here. Loader, loader will load the song from the hard disk to RAM. Look here. So the work of loading the song from hard disk to RAM is done by loader. Now the discussion is not over. Something very important about the loader is going to come. But this entire discussion was a little difficult. So what I suggest is you just draw this part of the diagram. You just draw this part of the diagram and write some notes up about it in your own words. So I'll wait a minute, one minute, two minutes. Just copy this, this center part. Okay. You don't need to draw uh, CU and ALU. Just draw the CPU. Just draw this arrow. Just draw the speaker. Okay. And just write some notes in your own words. So come on, do that. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, now let's continue. As I told you, the discussion is not over. If you have not finished writing, no problem. Write later on. Just listen to me very, very, very carefully. The next two minutes are very important, slightly difficult. Listen to me carefully, okay? Now here I took example of a song. Here I took example of a song. But what I told you over here is applicable to each and every program, each and every software which is installed on your computer, which is installed on your cell phone, on your cell phone. Okay. Now in order to explain you this thing, I will take example of WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Okay. Now answer a simple question: Are you using WhatsApp? right now right now come on anybody unmute and tell me are you using the whatsapp right now i don't think so okay right now i don't think you are using whatsapp okay so what happens is listen whatsapp is installed in your cell phone by the way whatever i tell you about cell phone is applicable to computer also i told about it yesterday so coming to whatsapp right now you are not using whatsapp but whatsapp is installed on your phone so right now whatsapp is is present in the hard disk of your cell phone okay in fact it is always installed in the hard disk of the cell phone all right now let's say after the lecture is over after the lecture is over you click on the whatsapp icon now when you click on the whatsapp i icon basically you are trying to run whatsapp you are trying to execute the whatsapp okay now when you click on the whatsapp icon okay what will happen is the loader the loader will transfer the entire copy of whatsapp from hard disk to ram so at this moment at this moment there are two copies of whatsapp in your cell phone one in hard disk and one in ram okay don't forget the ram is also there in your cell phone now while you are using whatsapp i repeat while okay let's say you are typing a message to somebody you are typing a message to somebody at lecture is over okay something like that okay so while you are using whatsapp the cpu the cpu will use that copy of whatsapp which is in ram okay so that copy of whatsapp which is in ram that will interact with the cpu it will interact with the cpu now let's say you have finished using whatsapp and let's say now you close whatsapp okay you close whatsapp you remove it from the memory of the phone okay so now when you close whatsapp what will happen is this copy which was there in ram okay it will get automatically deleted and now only this original copy will be there in your cell phone now whatever i told you just now it is applicable for everything and when i said everything take that word everything very 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 seriously for example we had this turbo c3 okay we had bin okay uh, we had project and inside this there was this file first.c now my simple question to you is see look at this path c drive turbo c3 bin project now my question to you is and i want anybody to unmute and answer my question unmute yourself and answer the question this file this file first.c is right now stored inside hard disk or ram anyone can answer this question <coughs> hard disk very good right now it is stored inside hard disk see a very simple thing this c drive okay this c drive this thing this is the hard disk okay if you want look here this is my pc and this is this hard disk this c this d they are all hard disks okay so basically the point i am trying to make is that program this program let me again go to the program let me again go to the program <clears throat> all right so this program all right first dot c is actually stored in a hard disk in the beginning now when i execute this program what happens is this program is loaded from hard disk to ram and the work of loading from hard disk to ram is done by the loader so if you ask me what is a loader okay the loader is a program which will load your program from hard disk to ram and it will finally start the execution of the program so loader is that last software which acts on your program and it starts the execution of this program all right i mean it starts the execution of your program so please understand one thing whatever i explained you about that song 
it is applicable to all the softwares all programs everything all apps on your cell phone okay there is one more interesting thing listen to this very carefully it's very interesting okay what i'm going to ask you uh see see over here in your computer when you click on this pc or my pc okay you see something like this windows c data d something like this okay now tell me one thing uh, please understand my question many of you will not understand my question now over here you see this hard disk this is the hard disk this is the hard disk okay but have you ever seen have you ever seen ram ram on your laptop on your computer i mean the way you see icon for this okay i can go inside this and i can store things over here so that way do you see any option for storing anything in ram again unmute yourself and give the answer anybody no no yes or no 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 okay you will never ever see anything which gives you the option to store anything in ram because you cannot store things in ram only loader can think can store things in ram okay so this was the whole concept of loader and ram okay finally finally in your oral exam or in your theory exam you may have this question okay so i want everybody to copy this question come on everybody copy this question all right just start with the answer just everybody come on start writing the answer right the following are the stages of program development the following are the stages of program development in order in order in order okay so the question is very simple over year over year there are five stages of program development we need to write these five stages in order okay so please unmute yourself and tell me the first stage only the first stage what will be the first stage anybody can answer no? editing yes very good very good the first stage will be editing editing okay next stage pre processing very good pre processing very good very good all of you very good pre processing okay next stage compiling compiling other come on compiling very good compiling all right next stage thinking 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 linking very good and the last stage executing executing yes. and executing is nothing but loading so now you'll copy all this or and this executing na here what you do in parenthesis just write loading also okay so copy the red color and just write loading in parenthesis all right guys so uh, this was the end of today's lecture now as i told you i'll upload that installation video and all on the youtube as soon as i install the video i'll inform you on our whatsapp group in whatever whatsapp group you are okay uh, also uh, this was the end of your trial classes the demo classes so if you wish to take admission you can contact me the fees for this course will be 5500 in which i'll teach you c as well as c++ okay so now uh, if you have any doubts you can ask me those doubts otherwise you can leave this meeting okay thank you very much so any doubts